The U.S. says it has launched airstrikes on a number of facilities in eastern Syria. Washington claims the facilities were being used for rocket attacks against American troops in Iraq. We're confident in, uh, in the target that we went after. We know what we hit. Uh, and, uh, and we're confident that that target was being used by the same uh, Shia militia that, uh, that conducted the, the strikes. And so you'll get more information. The Pentagon said the attack was carried out at President Joe Biden's direction. It said multiple buildings were destroyed as a result. A UK-based war monitor says the attack killed 17 fighters. U.S. forces have been targeted in Iraq recently. On February the 15th, rockets hit an airbase in Erbil Airport, killing a non-American contractor. A number of U.S. contractors and a service member also sustained injuries. Iraqi resistance groups condemned the attack. They have also denounced recent attacks on the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad's Green Zone. In October, the groups uh, reached a conditional ceasefire with American forces present in Iraq. Let's get you some reaction on that story uh, with the help of Mr. Tim Anderson. He's the director for Center for uh, Counter-Hegemonic Studies out of Sydney. Uh, uh, sir, it's good to have you with us. Let's... Uh, get your uh, reaction to this. What's your thought on that? As I'm just being told that we have this piece of breaking news. And let me, sir, before I hand it over to you, uh, read this for our viewers. It says that Russia has denounced these U.S. attacks on Syria as unacceptable and a violation of international law. Sir, we're with you. Yes, the U.S. occupation forces are uh, uninvited in Syria and unwanted in Iraq. And yet they are carrying out this type of uh, response, uh, aggression, um, on the basis of self-defense. Now, so there's a great continuity in the um, attacks and the rash and the um, the types of strikes that the Obama regime and then the Trump regime and now the Biden regime were carrying out. But notice that their rationale has changed. Initially, there was the idea that they were supporting some sort of democratic revolutionary movement. Then came the the pretext that they were fighting Daesh, when we know that they admitted, uh, Joe Biden admitted in 2014, all their allies were supporting Daesh and the other terrorist groups. Then the Trump administration talked about gaining the oil. And now they are more openly joining with Israel in saying they are trying to combat the influence of Iranian-backed groups, which means the entirety of Iraq and Syria in many respects, and also self-defense for their illegal presence there. So I think at least while there's continuity in their actions, there's a more open uh, recognition of the fact that they are in an open struggle for influence with the coalition of independent states in the region. Uh, sir, do you get along with this that, uh, you know, perhaps bombing such groups inside Syria, aren't they, in, aren't they basically the same groups that helped fight Daesh in the first place and destroying them or bombing them? will basically prepare the ground for the resurgence or reappearance of Daesh in Syria? Well, it, it, the first part I agree with, of course, that there's great continuity with the murder of Soleimani and Mohandas um, a year ago now, that the greatest national heroes of Iran and Iraq in the fight against Daesh were precisely those who were targeted and their colleagues in the, in the Hashid al-Shabi in Iraq. But now the resurgence of Daesh is really more to, the, to do with the direct um, uh, harboring of those groups in eastern Syria. Remember that there's this occupation, relatively small but strategically important occupation by the U.S. in northeast, in east and in southern Syria. And it's from there that these small bands are going out, not controlling whole cities as they did, but going out and, and carrying out guerrilla type attacks on, uh, on Syrian forces. So really there's nothing organic about the role of Daesh there. It's something that's very carefully cultivated. And, you know, there is something else that I'd like to discuss with you, although a lot of people may say that, you know, under Joe Biden's administration, perhaps some of the policies uh, as far as they are related to the Middle East region, of course, West Asia region might be different. You know, it's very interesting that you know, with the change of president, it seems that different administrations are following, well, the same policies. 
Yes, as I said, it's the same policy in many respects, but it's rather constrained. They are saying now that these were contained attacks because at the same time, they're pretending to reopen negotiations with Iran over JCPOA, which in my view is virtually a dead letter, but I don't know how that would give them any leverage with Iran to attack the groups that it's supporting in defense of the sovereignty of Iraq and Syria. So um, yes, there's continuity, but there's also some level of retreat in, in their rationales and in also the, their expectations. I don't believe that they think that they can win either in Iraq or in Syria, but what type of gains they're hoping to make, whether they're trying to stall it out and weaken and delay these groups, certainly they are trying in the long term to try and weaken and divide the independent states to try and prevent that very solid uh, block, uh, military, perhaps economic block forming between Iran, Iraq and Syria. Certainly they're afraid of that. Tim Anderson, Director for Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies out of Sydney. I appreciate your time.